Hey y'all, it's Lippy with Gemini Homestead. Gotta get my apron on. Cause what we fixing to do, we gonna fry some stuff. And I sure don't want it on my pretty yellow shirt. Y'all, my shirt says love in the sunshine. So I'm hoping that means I'm gonna get some of that voodoo going. Get us some 80 to 90 degree temps. What? I wouldn't be dancing. I didn't video that. But we're going to do some chicken fried chicken. Now, a lot of y'all do chicken fried steak. Miss Lippy don't care for steak. And uh, I have to wash the red meat that Buddy eats. So we're going to do chicken fried chicken. Let me get my little wrap here. Y'all know I can see. Y'all know what I got to do. Y'all, I can't cook without my rag. Well, towel is still a rag to me. But I've kind of laid things out so it can speed it up and y'all can see each step. So I'm gonna lower the camera and I'm gonna show you something, okay? Let's see, I know you can see it. Okay, this is two boneless skinless chicken breast. All I did was I came down the side and I separated them. I've already done that, but I wanted you to get the visual, okay? So we've cut them in half. Now this is really more than what we can eat, but it will make good sandwiches, okay? I need to put this up, wash my hands, because I'm gonna show you a little trick. Now, I have taken saran wrap and I laid over the breast. And I did that and I smashed it down because I don't want all that chicken juice going all over everything. You gotta be real careful when you're working with poultry. Well, any kind of meat, but mainly poultry. And I took my mallet and I used the smooth side. Okay, we're not tenderizing it. We're using the smooth, smooth side. Now I've already done them, but I'm gonna do a little bit more. Now, if you're mad at somebody, that's how you can take your anger. But what I have done is I've almost doubled in size. That's it, y'all. Oop, there's a piece. And I did that so they would cook faster. So I'm gonna take this off, chunk it, and nothing splattered. Even though I'm gonna re-wipe all of this, I'm not worried about anything splattering. Okay, we got that done. Chicken sitting over here on a plate. Now I'm gonna lower you and show you the next step. Remember, I like taking you step by step. That way there's, you know, I'm not leaving anything out. There shouldn't be any questions. So, here we go, this is the next step. Okay, to this bowl, I've got one egg beaten and just enough water to thin it out. So if I was guessing, about three tablespoons of water, okay? Now this is where you use your own hot sauce. I like Cholula, and I don't know how y'all pronounce it, I pronounce it Cholula, so. And I'm gonna hit it, this is to your taste now, one, two, I don't know. I go by color, y'all. Now this is not gonna put heat in your food. Now you see that? It kind of turned it a little, just barely tinted. That's all it did, barely tinted it. So we're gonna move this out the way. We're gonna move this out the way. Now, to this bowl, I've got a cup of all-purpose flour. Of course, I didn't know it was gonna be that much chicken. I'm probably only gonna do two pieces and then I'll put the other two up and we'll make chicken sandwiches tomorrow. But I've got a cup of all-purpose flour and I've got a fourth of a cup of cornmeal. An eighth to a fourth. I really didn't measure it, an eighth to a fourth. So really, you can't tell that there's cornmeal in here, but there's a good eighth of a cup of cornmeal, okay? 
We're gonna do a half a teaspoon of baking soda. About a half a teaspoon. There we go. Now I'm gonna do a teaspoon of baking powder. Because remember we had a cup of all purpose. If you, if you had a large amount, you would be using two cups of all purpose. You would use two teaspoons of baking powder and you'd use a teaspoon of baking soda. But what we used was a cup of all purpose flour, about an eighth of a cup of cornmeal, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of baking powder. So we're gonna move that out the way. Now, this is where I'm coming in with some of my ingredients, y'all. Let me turn you up. I'm gonna figure out one day how to get y'all here and here all at the same time. Now, a lot of you know, I came out with my own seasoning blends. It'll be two weeks this Friday. Um, this video here will go out in the morning Thursday, and I don't know what today is. I'm thinking it's like the 12th, 13th, I don't know. <laughs> Y'all have lost track of time. Anyway, um, a lot of the names, well, all the names are very confusing to some people from the emails. For instance, my clucking good. You would assume that's just for chicken. Well, it's not. Um, when I get through with the chicken fried steak, I'm actually gonna do fried okra. That video will come out Friday. Cause what I'm doing is I'm cooking our supper and I wanna introduce my seasonings. So we have a clucking good, great on poultry, great on pork chops. Uh, it's great on vegetables, it's endless. We also have the pork and good. We won't be using that today. But since I've got the camera going, this is great to barbecue with, smoke meat with. It's great in uh, baked beans, barbecue beans. It's great on uh, homemade french fries. If you're trying to get that little bit of a backyard barbecue taste. But I'll put it on pork chops and I'll put them in the oven, put them on the grill. But we're, getting, we're not using the pork and good today. Then we have my swamp mix. This is nothing more than a Cajun, some call it Creole seasoning. I call mine swamp mix because it's got a lot of stuff in it, okay? So that is the seasonings. Now I'm gonna drop you back down so you'll know, because I'm gonna twist it up. I'm fixing to mix these seasons with two different recipes and show you how versatile they are. All right, here we go. Now remember, we have one cup of all-purpose flour, an eighth of a cup of cornmeal. We had a teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Now, this is, what am I gonna use? Oh, my swamp mix. I keep all mine in jars. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of my swamp mix, okay? Now this is to taste. This doesn't have a lot of heat, y'all, but it's got warmth, okay? And then I'm gonna hit it with about a, I don't know, maybe a half a teaspoon of black pepper. There again, it's to taste. And then some salt, because I do not have a lot of salt in my mix. And I'm gonna come in with about maybe a half a teaspoon of sea salt. Now, if you wanted to, you could add some garlic powder. I'm not going to. You're gonna mix this very, very well, okay? There we go. And as you can see, I'm using a salad fork. And I'm doing that so I can blend and I can also use this as a pitchfork for my chicken. Okay, so we've got our chicken, we've got our flour, we've got our mixture. Now I'm gonna move you over, because there's actually an assembly line. And when you can make an assembly line, it makes this uh, process so much easier. Okay, before I lower you down, and I put this here so you can see where I was pointing, I've got just a small rack, but I've got a piece of saran wrap on my counter. That way, there again, 
no drippings is going on my counter, even though I'm gonna wipe them, I don't have the risk of poultry being on my countertops. But I put this here so you can visually see where it was at. Now, here we go. We're gonna come down and we're gonna take a piece of chicken, okay? And I'm just gonna get it down in this flour. And I still use my hands, but I think that this fork, I don't know, it always helps me flip. And you don't wanna coat it heavy, okay? And this chicken. Move this. And we're gonna go into the egg, water, and hot sauce mixture. Okay, you want it to drain off. Let me see if I can, can y'all, whoops. Y'all, there we go. Don't y'all love me as a camera person? Sweet baby Jesus. Hollywood would run me out of it. Well, they'd run me out for other reasons too. But anyhow, this is a cooking channel. No, it ain't. This is just Miss Lippy in the kitchen. Anyhow, see, I get off topic, y'all, and I start running off at the mouth. There we go. Now, I got it good and coated, and there's a reason for that. All right, now I'm gonna take back of my fork, knock it all off, and it's going right here, y'all. Remember where I told you I had that? See, I don't want it to drip. We're gonna do one more, and I am gonna put them other two in the ice box. It's gonna make some good fried chicken sandwiches. But you're not gonna know what to do. You're gonna be like, good Lord, I'm getting chicken twice in a week, fried. All right, we're just gonna run it through. Okay, back into the flour. I'm gonna have to use this. Now I know a lot of people use one hand clean, one hand, I mean, one hand for your wet, one hand for your dry. Y'all know Lippy by now. I don't follow rules. I just do what's comfortable, and that's what y'all got to do. You got to do what's comfortable for you. Okay, get this coated again really good. Let me set this down for a minute. I'm fixing to really get up in here, y'all. I kind of went too small of a bowl. There we go. All right. Easy peasy, right? All right. Now I'm gonna let this rest. While it's resting, I can clean up my mess because there's a, another little bitty step. Y'all, this goes fast, I promise. I'm just trying to take my time for y'all. All right, now those two pieces are gonna rest. I'm gonna clean up this mess and I'm gonna show you the next step. Make sure y'all can see this. I've got canola oil in here. And during the five minutes I was letting this rest, remember I cleaned up and that's when I got my oil hot. Now y'all, it's gonna be hard to tell you, I didn't measure the oil, but you only wanna coat the bottom and it barely come up the side. But remember the trick I've taught y'all with the toothpick, if you stick that toothpick in the center and it immediately starts bubbling on that toothpick, you're sitting about 350 degrees. So, we're gonna take those pieces that was resting. We're gonna go back into that flour mixture. Cause moisture come out, see? So we wanna go ahead and get that moisture with some flour. Cause we want a crust on this. And you could do chicken fried steak similar to this, omitting the cornmeal. I like the cornmeal on the chicken. Okay, here we go. Now see, it's very coated. You look at it compared to that one, see? Now, I am just gonna gently lay it in here with the last part going down away from me. Now I have a screen to catch all this splatter, so I need to get this one padded on in. I should have used a plate. But I had these sitting in the sink. I just washed them. I said, why not use these? Sure would have worked better on the plate. Here we go. We're almost there. 
Oop, there's some right there. I want to get this good and coated. This side coated. All right, now it's going in. We're going to go down again and then away from us. Okay, now this electric stove, it's sitting on a five and a half. Okay, all I've done is put a screen on it, okay? And we're gonna let these cook. I'm gonna look at the clock. I'm thinking about three to four minutes on each side. It's been about two and a half minutes. Now I'm gonna lower you down for a minute. I went and washed my rack. Remember, that's what we were using. And I've got a oval plate. This is what the chicken fried six chicken is gonna lay on. Because, let me turn you like this. If you was to lay that chicken on paper towels, that bottom's gonna get soggy. So in order to keep that crisp, crispy, you really want to set it on a rack, on a plate. Okay, you can use cookies, the little cookie rack squares. I got all shapes and sizes. I think this came out of a, a broiler or something. And then I'm just gonna set the chicken fried chicken in the oven to stay warm while we make the gravy. And then like I said, you're gonna have to tune in for the next video, cause we got fried okra, but we're gonna use this on the fried okra. We use the swamp on the chicken. See, it's versatile. All right. Let's get this turned. See why you wear an apron? See what I'm going to do. Let's see. There we go. Oh, man. It's gorgeous. And it doesn't take long because, remember, I thin them out. Oh, I guess I should have showed you. Let me see. I don't want it to splatter on me. See? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Y'all, I'm ready to eat. I am so ready. This grease got me on my arm. So you have to be careful. But, like I said, I don't know what pot you're using, or should I say skillet, but you don't want that oil covering them. Now, you could deep fry them, yes. Um, but my oil is barely coming up, and these chicken breasts, y'all saw, couldn't have been more than an eighth to a fourth of an inch, at most. I'm saying an eighth of an inch. Uh, so yeah, we flipped them. We're gonna let them go. I said two and a half minutes. It was actually three minutes. So we're gonna, and I cranked my heat down a little bit. I moved it to a four. We start off at a five and a half while the first round was cooking. When I saw all that grease staying consistent, not just going crazy, I dropped my temp on the stove to a five. Now I'm sitting at a four and a half, and that's where I'm gonna let it stay until they're done, and it's gonna be juicy, but it's gonna be perfectly cooked. If you got pink inside that chicken, that's a no-no. That means it's not done. So don't be eating no pink chicken. You know, that I, I was gonna make this short, but I gotta tell y'all a story. I'll never, ever forget this as long as I live. Buddy and I went out to eat, okay? That's something we don't ever do. Now, I'm not talking recently. I'm talking, oh, it's probably been six, seven years ago. We went out to eat. And he ordered, I think, chicken fried chicken. I don't remember the name of the restaurant. Santa Fe. Maybe that's it. I don't remember. They went out of business. Maybe this is why. And the little girl said, uh, Hi, she said, hang on. Yeah, he ordered chicken fried chicken, and she says, well, how would you like it cooked, sir? And I look, I look like the exorcist, I said. She looked at me, and Buddy couldn't say nothing. He was like, oh, hell, let me fix him to get her. And I said, what, what did you say, honey? How, how would you, sir, like your chicken cooked? I said, I said, well, sweetheart, I hope like hell it's 
scooped all the way. Well done. Uh, okay, I'll put well done. Maybe that's why they went out of business. And what I should have said was, Charlotte, I take it rare to medium rare. If they'd have brought me a damn chicken out clucking, I'd been like, oh, no, thank you. Y'all, this is real. I can't make this up. Sometimes you just can't fix things. You know, I used to have a saying, but this girl, she was so young. She didn't know no difference. But older people, well, I guess to be applied, but there's a saying I say. You can't fix stupid. Now, I thought you learned that in elementary school. Chicken ain't supposed to cluck on your plate like a cow's supposed to move. You know, cows can move on your plate. Chickens don't cluck and they don't lay eggs on your plate. Well, not least around me, they don't. Just saying. Let me check on my chicken I'm cooking. Well done. <laughs> Baby Jesus. I sure wish y'all was up in here. Y'all just look. Let me see. Let me bring y'all back over here. Let me see. Lord, if I get burnt, let me show y'all something. Look at that. What? I think I should have started it off on a fire. Let me get Oh my word. That one, buddy. All right, I'm gonna finish these off. I done talked almost to three minutes, so we got a six minute total. I'm gonna get them resting. I'm gonna go ahead and do the gravy too while I got y'all on the phone. You know, the camera. Whatever it's called. Okay, I'm fixing to drop y'all down. We're gonna make some gravy. Now I dropped this down to a, to a two. I drained all the oil, but about two tablespoons. Y'all remember that seasoned flour? I'm gonna come in with two tablespoons. Now I know the chicken was in here, but you gotta remember, I'm cooking this, so it's gonna be fine. How about two and a half tablespoons? Get my gravy whisk, and you see I didn't drain all that goodness that's in there. I just took the oil out, set it over in a glass bowl, So when it cools off, I can put it in my bucket. I don't put oil down my sink. All right, you see mine's getting a little on the dark side. That's what I like. I'm not making breakfast gravy now. And it's got all that seasoning. If you wanna cook that flour, a good 30 seconds maybe. All right, now I'm gonna hit it with water. Not much. Okay, starting to thicken on me. Just gonna drop a little bit more water because I got a half a cup of milk. Remember I said this ain't breakfast gravy. Chicken fried chicken gravy. Now, I'm gonna hit a little bit more water because it's going to be not thin like water, but it's it's going to be on the thinner side. That's because we need it to cook, and as it cooks, it's going to thicken up. Okay? Remember, it's already got some seasoning in it, but I'm going to hit it with a little bit more. Y'all, this is going to be good. Whew. All right. Maybe a half a teaspoon of salt. There again, what I always tell y'all, season to taste. Now, I went heavy-handed on the pepper. How about a half a teaspoon? That's a uh, heavy cracked black pepper. Let's see if y'all can see me in it. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. I'm telling y'all, I'm going to learn how to find something that does the whole thing. Like, uh, what they call that when you change? I don't never done it. Wide angle? No, that ain't what it's called. Panoramic. Yeah, that's what I need to do. 
I don't know. My head might be panoramic. It may be. Yeah, I ain't gonna try that. Okay. I'm on about a two. And I'm gonna stir because you, you don't walk away now. You walk away, you gonna burn it. But this is where you're gonna get it to the thickness that your family likes. Okay? We got us some cream potatoes over here. Let me show y'all. I mean, why not? I done went over my limit on... Oh, hang on, Lippy. That's my screen. That's for my fried okra. I want y'all look at that. What? Y'all know what I do with leftover cream potatoes? I make potato cake patties. Y'all, that's some good stuff there. All right, it's starting to thicken. I'm going to move it about a two and a half. Now that I got good control over it. Y'all need one of them gravy whisk. I don't know if I can see. That's the best whisk. Oh, don't want to catch my apron on fire. Did y'all see that? I had my my little tie was <laughs> stuck under the pot. All right, so I'm going to get this gravy. It's almost done. I'm going to go ahead and turn you off. I'll bring you back, though, when we get ready to plate up. And I'm going to go ahead and cook my okra. That's, remember, that's on the next video. I'm going to make y'all watch two of them. Um, because I need to show you how the seasonings marry with all kinds of things. So, I'm not going to end this one just yet. I'm going to get my okra done, then I'm going to come back with my plate up. So, I'll be back in a minute. We plate it up. Look at that chicken fried chicken. That gravy, fried okra, and bam, that's the flavor right there, y'all. All right, I cut me a piece. See, there ain't no pink in there. Remember I told you, you don't eat no pink chicken. Gotta be white. Or dark meat, but no pink. It's roof talk with your mouth full, people. It's out of this world. You know what my daddy would say? Sauce bon. That's some kind of good, y'all. All right, I gotta eat. Woo, I wish you was here. I'm gonna put them seasons in the link in the description. Go to my Etsy storefront. Y'all gotta try it. You just gotta try the seasoning. It puts it in levels of flavor that I can't describe. But until next time, God bless.